So it's remarkable to think that some 350 million years ago, a major decision to go terrestrial was made by simple vertebrate lungfish that led to the formation of the vertebrate lung. And its basic plan hasn't changed since that time. I'm Jeff Whitsitt. I've been a neonatologist and pediatrician uh, for many years here at Cincinnati Children's Hospital and have a long-standing interest in how the lung is formed, how it functions, and how we can learn to understand how to repair it. The lung map consists of a consortium of four different research laboratories here at Cincinnati Children's, University of Alabama, Yale, and University of Pittsburgh and San Diego, Pacific National Laboratories in Washington, and the Sabin Institute Children's Hospital in Los Angeles in collaboration with University of Southern California, an NIH-funded consortium that was recently established to begin to map the normal cells structure of the mouse and human lung in late gestation around the time of birth. The four research laboratories are working in collaboration with a group at Rochester who is procuring normal human tissue from pathological samples. All of this work is being coordinated by the coordinating center at Duke and RTI, both the procurement of tissue, the presentation of data, and the process by which uh, data will be obtained from uh, these tissues. You can see here uh, the remarkable structure of the lung in video with smooth muscles surrounding an airway that leads to the small saccules in the peripheral lung from which surfactant will be made and expansion will occur at the time of birth to allow efficient transfer of oxygen and carbon dioxide required for breathing after birth. The great challenge for uh, the group is to move from an understanding of the organization of the tissue and the architecture of the cells that comprise the lung to the detailed analysis of more than 40 cell types that comprise the tissue and understand this remarkable transition from a glandular-like tissue to the alveolar tissue that's required for postnatal breathing. Now we're using a combined approach of uh, an omics approach that allows us to integrate proteomics, lipidomics, genomics, epigenetics, metabolomics, and transcriptomic RNA analyses uh, to understand the remarkable process of lung formation. The lung bud begins as an outpouching of the foregut endoderm, as seen here uh, by the expression of a critical transcription factor, TTF1 or NKX 2.1. These cells migrate into the splanctic mesenchyme. A complex vascular system forms, seen here in red, the tubes outlined in green. And these branch structures then continue to undergo morphogenesis to provide the alveolar structures after birth. We're beginning to understand the circuitry that forms the tissues and, and tissue types during lung morphogenesis but there's certainly a great mystery regarding this latter stage of development when the alveolar uh, septi are formed. And it's this perinatal transition to air breathing that's a critical time for preterm babies where lung injury, prematurity, uh, infection can forever change the structure of the lung. And we feel strongly that understanding the molecular and cellular basis of normal uh, tissue will inform uh, the processes involved in abnormalities <clears throat> in lung structure and repair. So ultimately, gas exchange occurs from the alveolar space across a very fine epithelial surface layer, seen here in green, to the endothelial cells of the capillary structure within each of these septi. These are highly gracile, fragile structures, and yet we move liters and liters of air every day in a dynamic compression, decompression, uh, and this tissue is able uh, to maintain our respiration through life. We're very interested in understanding the process involved in forming new alveoli, how the peripheral cells of the lung create septi that further divides the alveoli into smaller structures that expands the surface area of the lung and allows for ventilation. Lung map will provide a detailed annotation of all of the structures of the lung during latter phases of prenatal and postnatal development as the lung goes from the pseudoglandular canalicular to the saccular and alveolar stages of development. These will be uh, detailed confocal microscopy using immunofluorescence of important useful cell markers that will be carefully annotated, useful for education of our fellows, trainees, and perhaps even uh, enticing uh, high school students to uh, embrace the complexity uh, 
of the lung. Detailed confocal microscopy using confocal stacking of images will allow us to rebuild from static images the complexity of the structures involved in lung function. And seen here is a saccular lung with smooth muscle, portals going into the small air spaces where surfactant is made. These confocal images contain detailed data uh, across the entire uh, tissue. We've been able to render the 3D stacked images obtained by confocal microscopy using immunofluorescence markers to then provide the coordinates for 3D printing of the tissue that allows us to create models. And here is the entire mouse lung at E12 or day 12 of development showing the structure of the microvasculature seen here in direct opposition to the epithelial tubules that were marked by the expression of TTAF1. Together, these will allow us to develop a very uh, precise anatomical rendering. This is an example of tissue later in, in development imaging the smooth muscle around the pulmonary arteries, the bronchioles, and the alveolar spaces in the peripheral lung in fine detail that will allow us to understand the precise anatomy and structure of the lung as it develops. Seen here is an ultra-thin CT scan of the mouse lung, allowing the investigators to move down the tubules and identify the structures uh, that allow for respiration. So lung gens will provide a, a final products that will integrate genomics, transcriptomics, proteomics, metabolomics, creating a great challenge for being able to integrate these data and provide them to the research public. So we have developed programs called lung gens and lung image that will allow users to easily interrogate the databases that will be generated in LungMap. This is a screenshot of our breath database using lung gens. We'll be using whole lung tissue from mouse and human lung, extracting whole lung RNA. We will then be isolating individual cell types using FACs and prepare from uh, those as well single cell RNA of individual cells of the multiple cell types that comprise the lung. Initially, we'll be isolating hematopoietic, epithelial, and endothelial cells, and mesenchymal cells of the fibroblasts that comprise the lung all through development. These cells will be subjected to single cell RNA, fax cell sorted RNA analysis. Single cells are isolated using the fluid IMC1 program. Cells are injected into small plates 96 well each. The cells migrate through microfluidics chambers and when they're stuck in the center, individual cells are captured. RNA is prepared and then sequenced. This is an integrated atlas of cells obtained from E16.5 mouse lung and demonstrates the diversity of cell types that are easily represented by the genes that they express, identifying subsets of endothelial, epithelial, various fibroblasts, smooth muscle, myeloid uh, cells that comprise the lung at this time. Deep sequencing of these RNAs provides extensive database regarding the diverse RNAs that are expressed by each cell type. These are all posited in lung image and lung map that can be directly queried at our website, the breath website within lung map. Uh, shown here are lung images at different stages of gestation which are easily explored by the users and downloaded, providing cell type specific data. These are directly integrated with the heat maps of the RNAs expressed by different cell types and are linked to our program called Lung Gen. The user simply can insert a gene of interest. The program will lead you to its expression profile in individual cell types and provide you lists of genes that are co-regulated. We'll be providing single cell data throughout developing mouse lung uh, from E16.5 and thereafter uh, to lung maturation at approximately four weeks of age in the mouse. Similarly, we'll be isolating cells from the human lung 
uh, and providing data in a very similar format. The same samples that are used for deep transcriptomic analyses are being provided to our laboratories at PNNL, at the Pacific National Laboratories, for proteomic profiling of the same samples that provide a detailed quantitative analysis of the proteins expressed in each of the cell types. Likewise, we're developing a detailed lipidomic map of each of the cell types in the developing mouse and human lung. Seen here are changes in the levels of lipids expressed in the mouse lung during postnatal maturation from day seven to day 28, showing dramatic changes in the profiles of lipids occurring with postnatal development. Finally, the group at the University of Alabama is developing a systems biology approach to integrate the data from RNA-seq, identifying the small RNAs, non-coding RNAs, with DNA methylation and gene transcription to understand the regulation of uh, gene expression that occurs in the postnatal period during the saccular to alveolar transition of lung development. Required for all of these studies will be the procurement of fresh human tissue, and this is being performed by the Brindle Group at the University of Rochester. This is the lung map human tissue core that is providing fresh human pathological tissue of quality useful for both imaging, cell isolation, and the lipidomic proteomic analyses that, that will be provided by lung map. Already we've been able to isolate tissue and cells from human lung and seen here the histology of the human developing lung using confocal microscopy to identify the many cell types in the lung and the genes expressed by sorted cell types obtained from human tissue. These kinds of data have never been obtained before. Beginning to image the human lung at the same level using confocal microscopy and seen here is the alveolar septa of a developing human lung showing the different cell types very similar in structure uh, to that of the mouse lung. We recently finished the analytic program called Sincera, which is a pipeline for single cell RNA analysis. Together with Top Fun and Top Gene and other analytic programs that we're developing here at Cincinnati Children's Hospital, this should be very helpful for the field to insert their own data and use our data in analytic programs that will help interpret the complex uh, data that will be uh, generated. These programs will take uh, terabytes of data, allow the rapid identification of different cell types, the genes expressed by those cell types, providing new markers that will be useful in their isolation and study, and linking them to the biological networks that determine their growth, differentiation, and functions. Well, in closing, I hope you'll all be frequent visitors to the LungMap website. We're all committed to providing you with pre-publication data of the highest quality. It's our hope that these data will be useful to all of you in moving the field of lung research forward that will lead to transforming changes in the care of children worldwide.